This video is sponsored by Augment Code. More on them later. All right, first, we have an update from Thinking Machines. They just raised a massive amount of capital for what I actually don't quite know. There is very little public information about what they're actually doing. What we do know is that they're going to be training models for enterprise. They just raised $2 billion led by A16Z, who basically funds every single investment on the planet at this point, with participation from NVIDIA, Excel, ServiceNow, Cisco, AMD, Jane Street, and more. So a little bit more information about what they do. According to Mira's post, we're building multimodal AI that works with how you naturally interact with the world through conversation, through sight, through the messy way we collaborate. And in the next few months, they'll be able to share their first project, which will include a significant open source component, awesome, and be useful for researchers and startups developing custom models. And we'll also share our best science to help the research community better understand frontier AI systems. Now, of course, I'm taking all of this with a grain of salt because lots of companies say they're going to do open source and then kind of roll it back when the economics don't make as much sense, but hopefully she follows through. Next, Waymo just crossed a major milestone, 100 million rides. Now, during our team's recent trip to San Francisco, we used Waymo all over the city and it was incredible. In fact, it was surprising with how quickly I got used to and trusted Waymo even more so than human drivers. The first trip was a little nerve wracking, but once I saw some of the subtle nuances in its decision making in day-to-day -day driving, I was completely blown away. Little decisions like, oh, that car looks like it's gonna pull out of the driveway, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit more space. Or I can't quite see over this hill I'm about to go down, so I'm gonna slow down. And there were so many little decisions like that where it just felt like a human driver on steroids. So congratulations on 100 million rides. I can see a very easy path to getting to 200, 500, in a billion rides. And remember, this was only across five US cities. And Sam Altman wrote a viral post on X, garnering 4 million views, talking about the future of the job market. If you've been watching this channel at all, you've seen both sides, people who think we're gonna have a white collar bloodbath like the Anthropic CEO, and others like Aaron Levy, the Box CEO, who thinks we're gonna have a very bright future where humans and AI work together and we're just hyper productive. That's the camp I fall in. I am much more optimistic. And now Sam Altman is commenting on what Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, has been talking about. They are both very optimistic. Listen to this. Agreed with lots of what Jensen has been saying about AI and jobs. There is a ton of stuff to do in the world. People will do a lot more than they could before. Ability and expectation will both go up. Let's start with that. I believe when the cost of intelligence continues to plummet, the universe of economically viable use cases is going to increase dramatically. And also problems that we didn't even think about tackling in the past will now be available for us to go after. And so not only will our abilities go up, but our expectations, our quality of life expectations, will also increase. And number two, people will still care very much about other people and what they do. Now, I think he's referencing taste and I think he's referencing the human capability to create something novel where AI just doesn't have that same energy, maybe yet, maybe ever. I know the often talked about example is chess. Even though AI started beating us at chess pretty handily about 20 plus years ago, people still love watching humans play chess. In fact, chess is more popular than it ever has been. Not only that, think about video games. AI has been beating us at video games for a long time, but we still enjoy watching other people play video games. There's just something about the human element. And number three, people will still be driven by creating and being useful to others. And I agree wholeheartedly. There is something to be said about being able to curate a wonderful experience or create a wonderful experience for other humans. And again, I'm gonna reference taste. For sure, jobs will be very different and maybe the jobs of the future will look like playing games to us today while still being very meaningful to those people of the future. And people of the past might say that about us, like my job, talking into a camera and then posting it on the internet. 
That was not a thing 30 years ago. That wasn't even a thing 20 years ago. Imagine somebody living 100 years ago trying to understand what my job is. It's absolutely insane to think about. Betting against humans' ability to want more stuff, find new ways to play status games, ability to find new methods for creative expression, etc., is always a bad bet. Maybe human money and machine money will be totally different things. Who knows? But we have a lot of main character energy more to come. I love this optimistic view. I completely agree. And I really do think we're going to live in an incredible future together. And next, let me briefly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, an awesome company, Augment Code. You're a professional software engineer and sometimes vibe coding just won't cut it. Augment Code is an AI assistant built for real engineering teams. It ingests your entire code base. I'm talking millions of lines, mature code bases, tens of thousands of files. So every suggestion that it gives you lands in context and keeps you in flow. And with Augment's new remote agent, you can queue up parallel tasks like bug fixes, features, and refactors. Close your laptop, go do something else, come back and it's done. And the only thing you need to do Review the pull request. So if you are reaching the limit of your other AI coding tools, give Augment Code a try. Augment Code also never sells your code. So your team's intellectual property stays yours. And you don't even have to learn new tooling or switch to something else. You can use Augment Code within VS Code, JetBrains, Android Studio, or even Vim. Start your 14-day free trial at augmentcode.com. Let them know I sent you all the links down in the description below. Thanks again to Augment Code, now back to the video. All right, next it looks like Uber is retrying to get into autonomous driving. Now, if you remember, Uber had some issues a few years ago where they started going down the path of autonomous self-driving cars, but then they had an accident that killed a pedestrian and they basically just scrapped their entire program, but now they're trying to get back into it. They just partnered with Lucid Motors. Lucid makes a pretty beautiful car, although I barely ever see it on the road. It's a very small company, but they announced their next-gen robo-taxi program exclusively exclusively for the Uber platform and Uber is going to invest 300 million in Lucid. So I'm all for more competition. It's hard to imagine competing with Tesla and Waymo at this point. These two companies have an incredible amount of data and it's one of those industries where as soon as you get out ahead, it's an exponential curve. You get out ahead first, you gather more data, that data makes your self-driving cars better, thus you're able to deploy more cars, thus you get more data, and so on and so forth. But good luck to them, we'll see what happens. All right, I know we've been talking about this like crazy lately, but yes, Meta AI has poached more people, this time from Apple. According to Bloomberg, Meta hires two key Apple AI experts after poaching their boss. And if you remember just about a week and a half, two weeks ago, we reported that Meta poached Apple's leader on the AI team. So specifically, Meta hired Mark Lee and Tom Gunter, a pair of key artificial intelligence researchers who worked at Apple Inc. for its super intelligence labs teams. And as you know, Mark Zuckerberg and the Meta team have been offering insane packages for AI researchers. If there has ever been a time to go get a PhD in mathematics or computer science or AI, now is the time. You are going to graduate with seven plus figures in your bank account. And it also speaks to the state of Apple. Apple has been so far behind in artificial intelligence. They're not really rolling any features out. They're still promoting Apple intelligence as if it's this incredible thing. And I never, ever use it. Never. I can't really stress that enough. Never once in my life. In fact, Siri is so bad, I've essentially stopped using that. I really hope Apple does something to catch up. I'm a big fan of Apple. I love all of their products, their design, their aesthetic, the software, the hardware, the way they marry the two. I'm just a big fan, so I really hope they do something big with AI soon. Next, we talked about ChatGPT agents in a video that I published yesterday, but I wanna share some more information. The OpenAI team for the first time has classified ChatGPT agent as high risk. This is their first product model anything feature that has been classified in the high risk category. So here's Karen Gu, safety researcher at OpenAI. We've activated our strongest safeguards for ChatGPT agent. And if you didn't catch that video, ChatGPT agent is like a combination of operator plus deep research plus ChatGPT. It allows you to put in a task. It can go browse the web on your behalf, take actions on the web on your behalf and complete long horizon tasks. Tasks that take minutes up to dozens of minutes. It's the first model we've classified as high 
capability in biology and chemistry under our preparedness framework. Here's why that matters and what we're doing to keep it safe. High capability is a risk-based threshold from our preparedness framework. We classify a model as high capability if, before any safety controls, it could significantly lower barriers to bio misuse. Bio, so bioweapons, for example even if risk isn't certain. We ran a suite of preparedness evaluations to test the model's capabilities. While we do not have definitive evidence that this model could meaningfully help a novice create a severe biological harm, we have chosen to take a precautionary approach and activate safeguards now. So basically, if the model itself with no safeguards is capable of helping somebody create a mass weapon, a bioweapon, then they are putting it as high risk. And that's fine, I appreciate that. And even after they put the safeguards on it, no model is perfect. Pliny the prompter is gonna get his hands on it and break the model. He's going to jailbreak it and he's going to get it to give him information that it shouldn't. That is the nature of non-determinism. So here are some things that they've done. They have an expert validated threat model, conservative dual use refusals for risky content, always on safety classifiers and streamlined enforcement and robust monitoring. They also provided different teams from the UK and the US with access to the model for red teaming for our bio risk safeguards. And they ran their own red teaming, thousands of hours with global experts, including biology PhDs and jailbreakers. I wonder if Pliny was part of that. They are also launching their bio bug bounty program, which means if you can jailbreak the model, they might pay you for that. So I appreciate all of the safeguards that they're putting in place. ChatGPT agent really is incredible. I've just started scratching the surface of what's possible there, but I'm excited to keep testing it. All right, next from Descartes, we have LSD and it looks incredible. So introducing Mirage LSD, the first live stream diffusion AI model. So basically it's able to use diffusion, apply to a regular live stream and then make it look spectacular. Look at some of these results. So here you can see in the bottom right corner, the original video, and now you can see the LSD version, completely different, streamed with a diffusion model on top of it. Pretty darn impressive. Here's a Minecraft looking version. Here's kind of an anime version. Yeah, so a lot of cool videos, a lot of cool opportunity from Descartes. So Mirage LSD runs at 24 frames per second and has less than 40 milliseconds of latency. It can generate infinite video lengths. This requires required breakthroughs from CUDA megakernels to drift resistant training in order to achieve over 100x efficiency gains and infinite generation. And they linked the technical report of which I will link down below. So give it a try, Deckard.ai. All right, and next we have a new model now out of South Korea. South Korean AI lab Upstage AI has launched their first reasoning model, Solar Pro 2. It is a 31 billion parameter model and has great performance. So here are the key details. It is a hybrid reasoning model, so it can be a reasoning model or non-reasoning model. It is priced competitively at 50 cents per million tokens for input and output, which is significantly cheaper than other models on the market right now. They have not released the model weights yet, but they did release the model weights for Solar Pro 1. So hopefully they do the same here. And as you can see, here it is on the Artificial Analysis Intelligence Index. Grok 4 at the very top, O3 Pro right there, Gemini 2.5 Pro, the top three spots. And then down here, we have a 31 billion parameter model, Solar Pro 2 Reasoning, right behind Cloud Four Sonnet Thinking and right ahead of Kimi K2. So go check out this model. All right, next, the Arc Prize just released their brand new benchmark. In fact, I was at the launch event in San Francisco. It was awesome. So thanks to Greg Cameron and the Arc Prize team for inviting me. So now we have Arc AGI 3, and there's a huge difference with this benchmark. It is interactive. Here's an example. So they give you essentially a bunch of puzzles. They call them games. And you have to figure out, first of all, what the game is, what the controls are, what the objective is. They give you no information. In fact, they don't even tell you the name of the game. You get a certain number of moves, which you can see up here in purple, these little purple squares at the top, and nothing else. You literally have to figure it out as you go. Now at the launch event, they had tested a number of different models and none of them passed any of it. But since they formally launched just a few days later, it was about a day ago, teams have gotten 16 or 17% as the top score. So still a long ways to go. And this continues on their theme of making benchmarks that are easy for humans to figure out and 
really hard for AI to figure out. That is their mission. Now, when I say really easy for humans to figure out, to be fair, I could only figure out the first puzzle and then the second one was pretty darn hard. So give it a try. You can play it yourself right now. 3.arcprize.org. All right, and the talent war continues. In the same video, we have to talk about Microsoft poaching the top talent from DeepMind. Microsoft has recruited more than 20 artificial intelligence employees from Google's DeepMind research division. So Amar Subramanya is the former head of engineering for Google's Gemini chatbot, the latest move to Microsoft from its rival. And he just posted this update on LinkedIn. And other folks have left as well, Sonal Gupta, Adam Sadovsky and Tim Frank, but over 20 people have left from DeepMind to Microsoft. So if you're one of those people, enjoy the new gig. All right, next, do you remember Stargate? It was announced a few months ago. It's the mega project by SoftBank, OpenAI, Oracle, and the White House was talking about it. It is essentially the mega project to build out massive compute infrastructure. But now it was reported that they're actually struggling to get it off the ground. Now this is according to the Wall Street Journal. They have sharply scaled back its near-term plans. Six months after Japanese billionaire Masayoshi Son stood shoulder to shoulder with Sam Altman and President Trump to announce the Stargate project, the newly formed company charged with making it happen has yet to complete a single deal for any data center. Now, of course, at the time of the announcement, Elon Musk said, no, they definitely don't have the money. I have that on good authority. Sam Altman countered with, yes, we do. And you know that. I have no inside information other than I would never bet against really any of these guys. Sam Altman is a killer and he is going to get it done one way or the other. But right at the time of this reported scale back, OpenAI and Oracle reported the opposite. So Oracle and OpenAI, according to CNBC, will develop an additional 4.5 gigawatts of Stargate data center capacity in the US. The company is announced Tuesday, kicking off an expansion of an already massive infrastructure project. The data center will create 100,000 jobs across construction and operations roles in the US. And according to a statement by OpenAI and SoftBank, together we're committed to delivering 10 gigawatts of of new compute capacity through Stargate, one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in US history. I really hope this happens. I hope it happens in the US because the AI race is heating up every single day. All right, next, you can now customize ChatGPT with your own selection of a personality. So reported by Tibor on X, the new can select personality feature is now visible in the ChatGPT web app. Available personalities, cynic, robot, listener, sage, and default. In fact, let's check. Now it looks like I don't quite have the new feature yet, but it always has had these little tags here that you can add and you want something that's chatty, witty, and so on. But now it should be a dropdown. I don't quite have it yet. And last, according to Kylie Robeson, a leaked memo from Anthropic CEO Dario Amade outlines the startup's plans to seek investment from the UAE and Qatar. Unfortunately, I think no bad person should ever benefit from our success is a pretty difficult principle to run a business on. So basically they figured out, okay, if we are to compete, if we are to raise enough money, if we are to charge enough money, sometimes we have to work with people who are unsavory in our opinion. Continued on, there is a truly giant amount of capital in the Middle East, easily 100 billion or more. If we wanna stay on the frontier, we gain a very large benefit from having access to this capital. Without it, it is substantially harder to stay on the frontier. And one more part, the basis of our opposition to large training clusters in the Middle East or to shipping H20s to China is that the supply chain of AI is dangerous to hand to authoritarian governments. Since AI is likely to be the most powerful technology in the world, these governments can use it to gain military dominance or to gain leverage over democratic countries, Amade wrote in the memo referring to NVIDIA chips. So we shall see. Now, Anthropic kind of frames itself as this knight in shining armor, this company that above all values AI safety. But as we have seen, to compete, you have to raise a bunch of money. And to do that, they are going to sacrifice things. So that's it for today. And once again, thank you to Augment Code for sponsoring this video. They've been a fantastic partner. Definitely check them out, links down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.